Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Infatuation Podcast. Happy holidays to everyone. I think this will drop right before Christmas and Hanukkah has started and Kwanzaa is coming soon as well as the solstice. So happy, merry everything to you out there. Um, are you in the mood for a fish tail, a tuna tail? Well, we got a story for you today. Uh, we're going to catch up with our old friend Adam from Die Hard Fishing on YouTube. And here, here's a video that you need to really watch. If you, if you have any interest, you know what? Even if you don't like fishing, this video is really fun. It's uh, Northern California, which if you don't know, we're, we're kind of cold water over here. I mean, not cold, but we are uh, medium temperature water over here, 50s, 50 degree Fahrenheit's over here so you know we catch salmon and halibut and striped bass and stuff like that but recently and we don't know exactly why but recently we've been noticing some tuna coming up the coast or coming inshore from hawaii or the open ocean and they've been able to catch tuna i think he said like 20 something miles off the coast of california northern california which is really really rare so adam went out with some friends on their boat and he went out a few times, and he hooked up a fish a couple times, but then he wasn't able to land it. And then on this third trip, he landed this monster. Now, uh, as far as bluefin tuna goes, it's not the world's largest bluefin tuna, but it's over 200 pounds. And if you know Bay Area fishing, you know, if you catch something 30 or 40 pounds out here, you're doing pretty well. But to catch a 200-pound, can you imagine having 200 pounds of muscle pulling on a fishing pole. It's insane. So we caught up with him a few weeks after it happened. I, I just really wanted to talk about this fish. It's not even caring if anyone else listens to this episode, but really just for my own sake, I wanted to talk to him about this fish. And he, as usual, he's always a good sport about coming on our show. So if you haven't heard our episode together with Madison, that was about March, I think. And so it's good to catch up with Adam and hear what he's up to. But yeah, this story is pretty cool. So here's some audio from his episode, but yeah, you got to go click on it and watch it. I'll put the link down below. So as usual, thanks so much for listening. Happy holidays, everyone. We're going to take a couple of weeks off, and so we will talk to you again in 2023. So, Happy New Year! <laughs> we're on, we're on. Oh my god, we're on big time. <laughs> This is bigger oh, than the last one we This is way bigger. Oh, oh my. Listen to that reel. Listen. Woo! Go, Adam. Go on, Adam. Adam. Somebody hold on to Adam. Adam's not going nowhere. Whoa. 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 everyone welcome back to the infatuation podcast we're doing a little side dish today catching up with our old friend adam from Die Hard fishing welcome adam what's up yeah thanks for having me back i guess it's been a year since our last one doesn't feel like it but yeah it's good to be back i know almost a year yeah we'll see <laughs> oh i should say and we're talking to the bronze medalist at the more than fishing <laughs> surf purge contest that looks like fun yes yes it was fun i really one, I keep saying this, but one of these years, I'm going to win this thing. But unfortunately, this wasn't that year. Yeah, one of these years. Yeah, you caught some slabs. Though. You got the biggest fish, right? I did, yeah. I got one nice one. Um, but unfortunately, my other our other four weren't weren't up to par with what everyone else is That's getting, the game, so. man. You got you to gotta get consistent, consistently <laughs> yeah. big. <laughs> yeah but uh yeah if you guys haven't listened to our other episode adam and i and madison did an episode i think it was episode 22 not quite a year ago but uh if you want to hear the full scoop on how adam got into youtubing he is diehard fishing on youtube and also also instagram 
But uh, you can hear the full episode. Go way back into the archives and you can find that one. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, no Madison today. I know she, I, I, we probably broke her heart because I know she wanted to talk fishing, but she's doing college applications. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a while since I've done that, but uh, yeah, I guess that's important as well. Uh, yeah. Probably a little more than, than you and me. Oh, well, but hopefully Maddie will be back <laughs> soon. But we wanted to catch up with Adam because he had this amazing video about a week ago. Uh, he posted this video about catching a bluefin tuna, a 200 plus pound. What's the, what was the actual <laughs> total on that one? 200? Um, so we, we cleaned it out of the water. Uh, we didn't get, yeah. So we didn't get a true, true weight, but... Once we got it back without every, you know, once it was all cleaned and everything, it was uh, 197. Yeah. So, so, you know, it's over two. It was, it was two something. I don't know. Man. At that point, it's just big. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. The exact number is not as important. <laughs> no, it's it's insane. Yeah. So, we'll, we'll point people to the video to see. It. You got to see it to believe it. But it's just amazing. <laughs> well, and what's more amazing is it's Northern California. <laughs> We're not talking about San Diego or Hawaii here. We're... Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So, like, well, if you're not familiar with uh, fishing, which I would assume most people aren't as in tune with it, but um, like for a long time, well, I, so I, I I have been fishing here for maybe twenty plus years around that uh, seriously, and then, but and up until maybe really like five years ago, there was no like bluefin tuna so i yeah. don't know if they were either there and no one knew about it or they just weren't there um but actually i was looking back at some older pictures like some black and white stuff but i don't know if it was from like the 40s 50s i don't know yeah, yeah. and they had some tuna okay. in like in the bay area like san francisco santa cruz monterey yeah, yeah. so it seems like they were here at one point and then i don't know what happened to them for a while and now i guess they're back so yeah i know i've, I've heard of albacore i've heard albacore not too far out yeah, I, I did actually uh, when I was maybe 12 years old, something like that. I went, I caught some albacore one time, but we'd go like 50 miles. Yeah, you're, you're way out there. It wasn't fun. <laughs> yeah, way, way out there. Even farther than where we you know went for this tuna yeah. that we just got. All right, so we'll get into that a little later. Hey, uh, you know what else we accomplished by doing this episode? I think we are the most prolific Bay Area fishing podcast. With two episodes, <laughs> awesome! <laughs> I think we, I think we beat out Matt's because I think he. Oh only, yeah, that's right. He only has one yeah, episode. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, did got you, a slim lead here. Yeah, did you ever listen to uh, like KNBR like seven in the morning on Sundays? They used to have the fishing report with Brian Hoffman. Have you ever heard? You ever heard? Really? No, I I used to listen to the Giants games on KNBR yeah, when yeah. I was a kid, but, but I didn't know they had a fishing report. He was there. A, a Chronicle guy. And it was actually a cool little show. He would actually call up the um, the party boat captains, oh. and he would have them live. Like they're motoring out, they're motoring out to the Fairlands or outside the gate, and he would have them <laughs> live on the air, like on their cell phone, and saying, "What are we doing today? Where are we going?" You know, and it's pretty. Oh, nice. It was kind of cool, but I don't think the audience is real huge. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately, I think radio audience is not not quite what it used to be <laughs> yeah you know though like commutes are still long people need to listen to something so anyway that's true that's audience true. out there if you want to hear uh, a fishing bay area fishing podcast let me know we'll, <laughs> we'll try to do more of these but uh let's get down to uh to some uh some fishing 2022 if you had to rank 2022 like you've been doing this youtube channel for what three four years now um, so I've been doing it full time, like, you know, whatever, for, you know, nine to five kind of thing for, um, two and a half, well, getting close to three years Okay. now, but, okay. um, but, but I did three more years before that, just, just, you know, on the side for fun. So I've been doing it for a little while. Where, where would you rank 2022 in terms of fishing? Um, uh, in terms of fishing. So it's a good year, right? It's tough to say. Yeah. Like, I feel like. In general, so like in the Bay Area, there's kind of like three major classes. I would say like halibut is a big thing. Salmon is a big thing. And then rockfish, lingcod is a big thing. I'd say like those are the big three. And it seems like for the most part, rockfish, lingcod is pretty similar year to year. It's it's pretty much the same. Um, And then 
Halibut, Halibut is kind of the same too. I don't know. Like maybe there's little upswings and downswings, but I think it's pretty similar year to year. But salmon definitely has ups and downs. Yeah. And this year was definitely an yeah. up year, especially for me uh, or another kayak guys. Yeah. Um, I actually, so last year, I think I caught two kayak for uh, salmon for my kayak. Only two. I, but, <laughs> yeah, only two. This year, I think I caught 14. So yeah. you caught like four for your me. first day out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah That's a lot. It's crazy. It was good for a little while there, especially, you know, during the, the peak of the summer and everything. It was good. So, so I'd say it was one of the better years overall. It seemed like it. Well, I mean, it's hard to tell on YouTube because every day is a great day. On <laughs> That's true. That's true. But uh, for me, it was better than better than average. I'll say that. Yeah, for sure. It sounds like it. We we got to tip our hats to the fish and game guys that are trucking these salmon. You know, because the rivers are are not full, and they the salmon have yeah. to get to the ocean somehow. So they they truck them down. I think right, and they they launch them. Yeah, so I think there's multiple places where they release them, but um, well, one is like the Half Moon Bay Harbor. Uh-huh. They release fish in there, and then. Uh, somewhere in the bay, I guess, or up in the Sacramento yeah. River or whatever, somewhere along there, they release them so they come back well, to the bay area. They're doing something right. <laughs> they're doing something <laughs> good. So yeah, Whatever they did, you know, three or four years right. ago, whatever the like cycle is, yeah. must have been a good good, uh, a good approach Yeah, you follow that model. <laughs> so hopefully they, they've got it down now, so every year will be a good salmon year. Yeah. Uh, sadly, I, I haven't been out uh, that much this year, but um, just mostly crabbing. So I gotta, I gotta get out in the water a little more. Do you notice the water's getting like I, I've, I've been down to the beach to crab snare, and I notice it's not quite as crowded as like 2020, where it was like elbow <laughs> to elbow on Ocean Beach. But uh, do you notice the yeah. less guys on the water? Or what do you notice? Yeah, I, yeah, I do think there was like a. a big joel like you're saying right you know 2020 <laughs> even last year yeah and now it's probably come down a little bit but there's still like uh so i went on the first day of crab season i forgot about crab season i was mentioning fishing earlier but anyways uh i went on the first day opening day and like i couldn't even i couldn't even believe how many kayaks <laughs> were out there like i don't know if it, um, for sure kayak fishing is on the increase i don't know if like overall you know maybe there's less boats out there or less people fishing from shore or whatever but huh. um like i think while well, i was in half moon bay that day which is pretty common yeah. area yeah. where a lot of people it's very accessible but I, there was like at least at least 50 kayaks i would say maybe even closer to like 80 <laughs> or 90 wow. out there it was crazy you can walk across the ocean just on the kayak <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't too worried about getting lost out there because there's plenty of people to help me. <laughs> the only problem is just finding a spot where there's not five other traps. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. So, hey, it was good to see you uh, pedaling for salmon this year again. That that was a new little. Yeah, yeah, I did. Well, not by choice. By the kayak <laughs> that I like to use, just because it's easier. You know, obviously because I don't have to pedal. But it was out for a little while. Um, well, because it has a motor, there's just more moving parts and stuff like that. So just there's a few fixes that like lined up. So it was gone for, I don't even know how, but at least yeah. a couple months, I think. Yeah. So I was back, feel like I was back in the stone age pedaling for, <laughs> for salmon. <laughs> Getting your cardio at the same time. Yeah, but it was good. I, I don't know. Maybe that kayak has some good luck. Maybe I yeah. need to look at it a little bit more because while I had that kayak, I was Catching all kinds of salmon. Uh, yeah, you know, you gotta think about it. Maybe it's the <laughs> it's that green color. Yeah. yeah, or the motors maybe scaring them off. I don't know. But, Who knows, uh, right? Yeah. All right, man. Well, let's talk about this this amazing fish. Did you name the fish yet? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta name this this. I, I, you're the first person to ask that. Maybe I should call it. <laughs> We'll come up by the end of the show. We'll come up with a name, but uh, <laughs> so if you don't know, so San Francisco Bay Area water is what, like 52, 53 degrees, pretty, yeah. pretty cold. Yeah. And then, um, you know, and then if you've been to San Diego or Hawaii, you know that it's not that cold. <laughs> what, what's San Diego typically? They're in the um, 60s. so it, it ranges sure. based on the season, but I want to say like the coldest gets in the middle of the winter is like. 
60 ish degrees yeah, yeah and then maybe during the, the summer it's 70 yeah much like much that. warmer and which doesn't sound like a lot if you're just talking about air temperature but when we're talking about water temperature one degree can make a huge difference yeah and so so some of these fish spend most of their time down south or or way out by the pacific by closer to the equator and so it's this kind of weird phenomenon right now where we have warm water species. I saw an article from like Fort Bragg, like way up Crescent City, mm-hmm. and they caught like a dorado and some mahi mahi over there. Yeah, it's crazy. Like these yeah. are these are fish that you totally think of as Hawaiian fish. You know, fish that you catch off the coast of Hawaii, and a yellowfin. They caught a yellowfin up there too. I think like a 150 pound yellowfin. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty nuts. Yeah. So uh so when did when did you hear about this uh blue tuna bluefin tuna bite? Uh so like I said, I, they've been catching a few like it seems like it's getting bigger and bigger every year, but like I want to say like the first time I heard about it was maybe like five years ago, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um and like a few were caught. And then um I think the first time I tried was maybe like two years ago. Um, and we did, I, I think I mentioned it in the video, but I like looking back now, we had no chance of catching one of that. <laughs> like our gear was not, yeah, yeah. it was too small. Like our, we're, our methods were just not right. Um, but anyways, yeah, well, that was the first time I tried. And then I did try it again last year. I think it was the first time I went actually with the charter because, uh-huh. which I don't normally do, but I felt like I was so lost and needed to get some kind of direction. So yeah, there's, there's those few tries. And then this year, um, I think it was like end of October was the first time we, mm. the first trip we took. Um, and we actually hooked one yeah. the first day, but we lost that one, unfortunately. And then we went the very next day and it, another it was, was with me and uh, two other or three other buddies the second day. Um, we hooked another one, but lost that one again. Yeah. Um, and then, I th- yeah, I think that that must have been like end of October time frame. Okay. And then, uh, so beginning of November, it's crab season in the Bay Area. So I think there were some bad weather days and then crab season started. So we just, we didn't go again for a while. Yeah. And then um, we finally went this third time. I want to say it was before Thanksgiving, a few weeks into November. And that's when we finally, we finally hooked one of land So So the first two you caught, are you just are were you feeling like you were out outclassed in terms of the gear like were you feeling like oh man i don't even know if we can get this thing (laughs) yeah so like the well the first one we hooked was actually on my rod that i had like set up and everything so like i don't know i I almost was like in shock that we actually hooked one yeah yeah um but yeah once we started fighting at us we were like man this is like we could land it on this setup that we're using but it'll take a lot longer and our chances are just way lower. Yeah. The longer it takes, the more time it has to, yeah. you know, shake the hook, obviously. So, so yeah, we were a little outgunned. And and the first one that we hooked, I, we we saw it, actually, because we bought it for so long and brought it close to the boat. But we, I personally, I didn't see it though, as I was reeling it in. The other guy was looking over the edge. Looking, he said he, he thinks it's around 80 pounds or so. Uh-huh. So, that was like a baby compared to the one that we actually landed. Yeah, but you were thinking so, this is huge. <laughs> Yeah, the problem, like, if we're having struggling with this little small one, like, if we would have <laughs> big one, man, we would have just been toast. But yeah, uh, but yeah, we definitely we were we we're undergunned at the beginning. We we're lucky that we got it together by the third because we definitely wouldn't land that one with, yeah. with our original gear that we were yeah. using. So, what are you using, like a five foot pole, like a like a broomstick? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's basically, yeah, we for in, like fishermen, one of the uh terms they use is, yeah they call it a broomstick because the the rod is so thick <laughs> and it barely bends because it's so heavy you know, it's well that's so, what you thought built for big fish yeah <laughs> you thought it true, doesn't actually. bend <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah it is like a five foot broomstick with like uh so for comparison like if you don't fish normally or fishing for like salmon or halibut or something like that like you're using like 20 to 30 pound line, maybe 40 if you want to get really heavy. But for this particular fish, we had a 120 pound line. <laughs> um, and then the reel is just like, mat, like yeah. 
I was telling someone like you feel powerful just holding the rod, <laughs> not even with the like, not even fishing, just holding it because it's so I don't know, just so big compared to what yeah. we normally use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, <laughs> so you're you're trolling out there, and, and it's amazing the speed that you're trolling, right? You're, you're like you're kicking up a wake when you're trolling. Yeah, well, I, yeah. So like my max speed on my kayak when I'm even my pedal kayak, which I can go a little bit faster than the motor. My max speed is like four miles an hour. Like maybe I can touch five if I'm like, you know, had extra coffee in the morning. The tailwind, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah tailwind. Um, but when we're trolling for these, those bluefin, I think we're going like 14 miles an hour, 15, <laughs> something like that. So yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're thinking yourself, fast. are we going too fast? <laughs> like, like, can they <laughs> even catch us? But then, then, then it takes it down and it just starts screaming. The, the reel just starts screaming. Yeah. Uh, like I'd never, I was telling, uh, I tell people in the video, I think I, I've never seen line come off the reel so fast. And on top of that, because our stuff is so big and heavy, like with extra tension on the thing compared to what we're normally fishing. Yeah. So not only is it pulling it faster, it's also, you know, there's more resistance on it as well. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very powerful fish yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, in the video, you, your friends are like, someone hold on to Adam. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're like just hanging on for dear Like you're squatting on the ground just trying to get some leverage yeah. on this thing. Literally just holding on. Yeah. But yeah, my friend was like, uh, it's funny, we were fighting. He was like, I don't think there's any land mammal that can have that kind of power. He was like, maybe a rhinoceros or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, he was like clarifying. He was like, maybe if you just dropped it off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> it's running running on flat land. I don't even know if they yeah. can pull that hard. I mean, I'm not shaming you or anything, but you guys have to tap out like three or four times each. You, to, <laughs> you did do 10-minute yeah, shifts or five-minute shifts on it. Yeah, yeah, we did. Honestly, I was telling – I said this in the video also, like normally, like just regular fishing, it's always fun to catch your own fish and you want – like especially on the kayak, right. you have no choice. It's all you. But like going into it, I was like, oh, I want to catch my own tuna uh -huh. and like, you know, fight it up. But it was actually more fun to do it as a team, I think. Yeah. Just because, well, the three of us that were on the boat, or four of us, I guess, when we when we caught the fish, none of us had ever caught one uh -huh. before. So we're all basically four noobs out there just yeah. trying to figure it, figure it out. But, uh, yeah, it was fun to do it as a team. Yeah. It was more of a... Yeah, it felt more more rewarding at the end. I feel like no, it was it was pretty epic. Yeah, it's it just a real fun watch. Everyone should go watch this. About uh, eight or nine days ago, this video was posted, and so you get this thing. Like you have to double gaff it. <laughs> you know, it's a little dicey there. <laughs> you're like, I don't know. We don't know what we're doing at all. <laughs> so you double gaff this thing. You're like, should we just grab it? What do we do? Get a tail noose on it, or what should we do? And you get it on board. And it funks on the deck. And what was your first thought when you saw this thing out of the water? It's like a monster. It, we get my, well, for, even when you see it in the water, I'm like, I've never seen a fish like this ever. Like, yeah. It's like the size of the most sea lions that you see yeah. just swimming around. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, once we like finally got, like, like you're saying, we had to get two gaffs and then we're trying to figure out how to. <laughs> tie a rope to it but like couldn't figure out so just basically just grabbed it the three of us yeah you know whatever pulled it in but yeah once it get in it was just like this is just a huge hunk of fish like yeah the it's girth it is like you know it's like six feet around too i feel i'm not yeah i mean feet. it's it's almost well it was almost as tall as like i think it was uh yeah, it was 60 something inches so it's yeah. you know over five feet but like girt like yeah, it's way fat. Like I'm almost six foot. Yeah, but so it's almost as tall as me. But just like you couldn't get your arms around. Of the fish. No, no way. Yeah. You, just moving it around because, like, uh, even after we caught it, like bringing it back to the harbor, we wanted to weigh it and stuff like that, just because we we're curious. And just moving it around took three, and it was like tough for the three of us <laughs> yeah. to just figure out how to maneuver the thing. Yeah. yeah. What's well, funny too is that there, you know, in the intro scene, you're like. I got the biggest cooler I've ever seen in my life. And then you put the fish in, it doesn't even fit in this cooler. You know, it's, no. it's one of these, you know, really big ice chests that, that, you know, probably the biggest one they sell, I would think. Yeah. Well, actually that, so that cooler that is an in intro was the biggest cooler that I have. And then the, but we didn't even use that cooler because it was smaller than the <laughs> big cooler that the other guy had. Okay. So I was like, okay, well, at least this is better, but it's still that one wouldn't fit. Yeah. Yeah. 
so yeah. crazy. It's amazing. So so where where is the fish now? What did we do? What did we do? We we cleaned it out and divided it up. Well, or? yeah. So there was four of us. So we kind of split it four ways. You know, we cleaned it up and everything that night. I want to say that like people were asking me how much meat do you get off of a <laughs> fish like that. So like the total weight of the fish after we gutted it was probably or we t- we took the head off, gutted it, and I'll, like it was probably around a hundred. 60 pounds so much yeah. and then once you fillet it and then take all the skin off you know there's like bones and all the other stuff i want to say there was probably 120 pounds of like you know fillet yeah. you know steaks and stuff like that so i i took home like 30 pounds of tuna <laughs> so yeah um i i think i ate tuna every day for like <laughs> four or five days after that because well another thing is like w- when a fish is that big like normally with a salmon, there's not like, like it's just a filet, but with the tuna, cause it's so big, there's different cuts of meat. Yeah, so like yeah. the, the top loin is like visibly different and tastes different than mm. the bottom loin. Um, so yeah, I was like trying all the different cuts and everything first few days. And then uh, luckily this was right before Thanksgiving. Okay. So I had <laughs> Thanksgiving, like, you know, I went to see family for Thanksgiving. Everyone got, to have Thanksgiving tuna with their turkey. So yeah, I've been sharing it with family and friends. And I don't know if I, I'm sure they still have some in their freezers as well. But yeah, um, yeah, no, nah, super so. fun. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You gonna? I mean, I want to say fish of a lifetime, but for you, you're probably gonna go out and do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I said the same thing. Like, I don't know if I'll catch it. I hope I do, but right. you don't know. Yeah. I mean, you never know. I, these like the like I said, for the first, you know, whatever, 15, 20 years of my fishing career or whatever, like they weren't even there. Or yeah. At least people didn't know about it. So, so who knows? Maybe, maybe they, they could disappear for another 30 years. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully it's not the fish of a lifetime. Hopefully it's just a, just, just a, the a, first one. a nice fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. How far out are you going? You're going 20 miles out or? Um, yeah. So like we, like from the Harbor, I think we traveled about 20 miles, but it's not like straight out. Right. It was like, um, you know, at an angle. So I think we're about maybe 10 miles offshore. Yeah. I think you have to get, I mean, you, can, you can still see land and everything, but you definitely have to get offshore like a little bit. There's something, there's like, there's a sweet spot, right? Where there's like, there's inshore water and then it's kind of too cold. And then. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, um, this particular area that we're fishing, like there's these deep like canyons uh-huh. under under water or you know under the surface so you can't see obviously um and i don't know if the warm like I, i'm sure there's some kind of like updraft there where it pushes yeah. up nutrients and might push up warm water too i'm not yeah. sure um so it seems like these tuna were hanging out around those that little nutrient rich area and another thing actually it's totally separate from the tuna which might even be a more interesting or rare catch, depending on how you look at it, is the other fish that yeah. we caught. I don't know if you... I saw it. Um, the weirdest looking fish. Yeah, a, <laughs> yeah it looks like a like a possum head with like an eel body and a sailfish yeah. dorsal fin. That thing is um, funky, yeah. But yeah, it's called a lancet fish, which I didn't know at the time, but obviously we looked it up after. Um, but yeah, so like I looked up some information on that fish which we happened to catch at literally the same exact right. time as the tuna which is, yeah i don't know if they're traveling together or well, mm-hmm. i don't know but um but yeah so like the last i, I haven't done that much research but the from one one article that i was reading is the last recorded catch was from san diego in 1996 whoa so all right that was like 20 was that 26 years ago yeah so, um yeah, obviously they don't get caught. So I was reading that they get washed up on shore sometimes, or people, you know, people see, but like actual, yeah, you know, getting caught by a fisherman was uh, the last one. I guess the last recorded one. So like, there obviously could be more, but yeah, uh, it was 1996. Wow. So that might even be a more impressive catch. And then well, we didn't even you just threw it up. <laughs> it's like a side note. Yeah, that's <laughs> by catch. You know who would have liked it is uh, one of those. You know, like right behind you had that that fish print, the Gyotaku guys. They yeah. probably would have really liked that fish. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. That would have been a cool one. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. That would have been. That would have been well, really yeah. You had other, yeah, you had we other things on your mind. Go, so. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, it was funny. Like at the time we we brought this thing in and there was um, three of us fishing. So like me and this other guy were looking at this fish like, oh, it's so cool. So good. And the guy in the back is like, oh, like uh, guys, <laughs> hello. We're still finding this big tuna back here. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. We're, we're here to focus on this. <laughs> Oh man. All right. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Everyone should go check it out. Um, thanks for catching up with us. You know, we gotta we gotta stay ahead of Matt's and his podcast. So if he ever comes out sure. with another episode, we'll have to <laughs> we'll have to do the third installment. Round three. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, everyone go check out Adam's channel, Die Hard Fishing on YouTube. Uh posts every week pretty much, right? Yeah. That's uh, the plan. I'm actually trying to do two per week from now until the end of the year, but you know, so yeah, I'm at least once a week, one to two times a week. You wanna you wanna tease anything? We got something interesting coming up. Um, uh, man, I was working so hard on the tuna video for a while, so I didn't do much. But yeah, uh, today I went out and I caught some big rockfish on the fisherman's life jigs. Okay, so that's my uh, that's well, I'm, that's probably gonna come out next. I don't know when this podcast. Yeah, goes, yeah. But at this time it'll come out next week probably yeah okay yeah well this yeah we might come out about the same time <laughs> oh okay perfect yeah i yeah. like those vertical jigs. Yeah, i caught some big big vermilions Ooh. i wish i had a, had a picture it's all the footage still on my camera yeah now, so. yeah but yeah that's my that's the next one that i'm excited about i guess no, I, I love well, i was telling you before i love rockfish because you never know what you're pulling up you know <laughs> you're pulling up something <laughs> And you think it could be this or that, and then the colors and the different species. It's like a you know, it's like a potluck. Yeah. You don't know what you're gonna get. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I caught some. I caught some weird ones. Like the I don't know if you ever caught a China rock yeah, fish. Yeah. It's like the black one with all those white or yellow speckles uh-huh, all over. Uh-huh. That one's really cool. And then I caught yeah, it was big like vermilion. I actually let it go because I felt like, yeah, I felt like I should let it go. Those are like eighty years uh, old, right? Yeah, it was a, yeah, yeah. It's like senior citizen fish yeah yeah no <laughs> hey if you uh since this is the since this is the infatuation podcast those china cod you can make some friends yeah, you know my mother-in-law my mother-in-law will be your pal for life you get a couple of china cod uh, so I was, I was wondering like can you tell the difference in taste me no <laughs> okay but they swear by it you know they're like oh this i know th- i've heard that too i was well i haven't had one in a while so i um i'll test it out with this one and see yeah, I, can I don't know what it is. No, I can't taste, <laughs> I can't taste <laughs> the difference. But yeah, no, they're like, oh, like I bring them over and I'm like, oh yeah, here's some blacks and blues and, you know, olives and here's, and they go, ooh, the exotics. Yeah, they like that one. They yeah. like that one, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, all right, man. Thanks for catching up. We'll, uh, we'll keep watching the channel. Everyone out there, watch the channel and uh, get out on the water, right? Get out. There's perch season still, crab season going on right now. Getting close to sturgeon season. What else is coming up? We got good time to go clamming. Rockfish is still going on for another month or so. A, a rockfish for right. till I guess half a couple weeks left. End of the year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So get that freezer full of rockfish. <laughs> oh, and then the herring spawn coming up. That's always fun. That's right. That's right. <laughs> There's always something to catch. Always something to catch in the ocean. Yeah, the ocean or the lakes or the rivers. Yeah, so. All right, we will catch up with you again. Next time you catch another 200-pound tuna, we'll catch up again. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Yeah, well, you never know, man. It's called diehard fishing. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. So That's true. That's true. All right, Adam. Cool catching up. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thanks for having me on. All right, bye. All right, later. Okay, just hold him there. Hold him there. Don't, don't lift him up. Just hold him in there. Just grab him right here. I think we can lift him, Jeff. You think so? Yeah, you got him. Come on. Okay, guys. ready? One, One two, two, three. Ah! Woo! Yeah! Oh! 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 Oh, my hand is shaking right now. Oh, yeah. Everything's shaking. <laughs> oh, this is epic. Yeah. It's literally taller than you, dude. I took like a good 35 minutes to bring him in. Oh my god. That's pretty good for a fish this size. I mean, people keep finding this fish for hours. Yeah. Dude, this might be more than 200. More than 200. Drop, drop okay, we're going to slide it back. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my god, Jeff. Yeah. Lift the tail. Okay.
All right, good enough. That's as good as you can get. Well, we have ice in the belly. Dude, I gotta put some underneath All them. over, yeah, all over. We can get more when we get back, yeah. Thank you.